Good afternoon. On the behalf of the Uni Union of Concerned Scientists, it is my pleasure to appear before this subcommittee. My name is David Lockbaum. I have been UCS's nuclear safety engineer for the past six years. UCS has worked on nuclear plant safety issues for nearly 30 years. Nuclear plant security has been one of my top three focus areas since 1999. Our attention was drawn to this topic after the NRC discontinued its security tests in July of 1998. The security tests featured simulated attacks by mock intruders, sometimes as just a single person, against the facilities. The NRC began testing security in 1991. Approximately half of the tests conducted through July of 1998 revealed serious problems. Public outcry forced the NRC to re reinstate the testing later in 1998. From reinstatement through September of 2001, when the NRC once again discontinued the tests, approximately half of the tests revealed serious problems. While identified and fixed security problems are better than unidentified and uncorrected problems, we would prefer a declining failure rate indicating that the nuclear industry was taking security seriously and not waiting for the NRC to point out its shortfalls. On September 10, 2001, the NRC planned to test security at 14 nuclear plants in the upcoming year. All tests were canceled after 9-11. The NRC is just now reinstating a modified testing program at four plant sites. Since 9-11, the NRC has issued a series of orders requiring security upgrades. For example, access control requirements have been tightened. The NRC now wants background checks to be completed before workers roam freely inside nuclear power plants. That didn't used to be the case. The NRC plans two other orders. One proposed order covers security guard working hours. Nuclear plant owners responded to the security orders differently. Some, orders, some owners hired more guards. Other owners added few guards and just worked their existing guards longer hours. The Project on Government Oversight reported last September that some security guards were routinely working six 12-hour shifts in a row. When the NRC sampled security guard working hours last fall after that report, they found guards at seven plants working excessive hours. The proposed order will protect against human performance problems caused by fatigue by limiting the number of working hours. The NRC's other proposed order deals with training standards for security personnel. The proposed order will reportedly require security guards to demonstrate proficiency with their weapons more frequently and under more realistic conditions. These orders are essentially links in the security chain. Some orders strengthened existing links. Other, others added links to the chain. But any chain is only as strong as its weakest link. The testing program remains the best measure of that weakest link. The tests look for weak links and challenge them. The only thing worse than finding a weak link is not finding it. NRC administered security tests conducted at least once every three years provide Americans with their greatest protection against nuclear plant terrorism. Until all nuclear plants have been tested, no one can claim that terrorism threat is being adequately managed. Until then, we merely have good intentions. The NRC not only stopped security testing after 9-11, it also stopped meeting with public stakeholders on security matters. UCS and other public stakeholders fully accept that 9-11 forced rethinking of the information that can be openly discussed. But as today's hearing clearly demonstrates, there can be responsible public discussions of nuclear plant security issues. The NRC refuses to accept this reality. UCS has proposed a series of ways for the NRC to re-engage with public stakeholders in the post-9-11 world. The NRC's repeated refusals to interface with UCS and other public stakeholders is particularly troubling because the NRC does interface with other public stakeholders, like the American Nuclear Society. It is abundantly clear that the NRC is hiding behind lame excuses only to avoid meeting with public stakeholders who might express criticisms, like our group. This is unfair and unacceptable. UCS would greatly appreciate it if this subcommittee would encourage, induce, or otherwise force the NRC to re-engage public stakeholders on security matters. The NRC's dismissal of contentions about security or about terrorism and sabotage from its licensing proceedings is based in part on its promises to upgrade security. The net effect of the agency's actions are to exclude the public from intervening on security issues 
in specific licensing cases and also to exclude the public from participating in generic safety discussions. As a minimum, the NRC must listen to security concerns from all interested public stakeholders so that the agency has the benefit of broad perspectives while they're making policy decisions. On behalf of UCS, I wish to thank the subcommittee for conducting this hearing on nuclear plant security and for considering our views on the matter.